Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Fabian Laguna, and I'm part of the engagement committee on the Business School Alumni Network. Uh, I got involved on the Business School Alumni Network as a student actually last year uh, as a part of the Students Today Alumni Tomorrow group. Uh, Hiba is actually going to talk about that right now, but I just wanted to welcome all of you and uh, you know let you know that I came up with this idea last year and brought it to the committee um, and Mason and Milena and Amanda uh, who help with the committee are, are kind of helped made this made this possible and uh, I appreciate you all being here. These panels are really a chance for you to have a, uh, an opportunity to interact with alumni that were in your shoes at one point and kind of hear any anything that you'd want to learn about them. I know that in this case it's a recorded, um, but we we also are, are hosting uh, in-person panels uh, and we encourage you to reach out if you have questions or you want to see more of these types of things um, at BSAN, it's B-S-A-N at ucdenver.edu. Um, I hope you enjoy this panel, and I'm going to hand it off to Hiba to talk a little bit about Students Today, Alumni Tomorrow, which is why I'm sitting here right now. Hi, thank you so much. I'm so excited to talk about our Student Today, Alumni Tomorrow initiative, which is all about how you are a student at the business school today, but soon you'll be one of our alumni and still a part of this wonderful community that we have at the CU Denver Business School. For many of you, your college and career journey is just beginning, which is a very exciting time. And the business school is here to support you every step of the way with some amazing resources like this alumni panel that we have today. We want you all to take some time to think about what you want your journey at the business school to look like. Of course, during your time here, but also especially after you graduate, because your time at the business school won't end when you graduate. It will actually continue throughout your careers and lives, which is a very proud feeling. So as a student of the business school today and an alumni tomorrow, we hope you will all continue to inspire the next generation of students that are in your position today. Thank you. Thanks so much, Hiba. Well, now I'm going to hand it off to our moderator, Jeff Cook, to get us started with, with the panel. Hi, everybody. Uh, well, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate you guys taking the time and speaking to our students. Um, I've got a handful of questions I'd like to ask you all. And, and the first one I want to open up to everybody. And, and what it, really what it is, is, is when you were in school, you know, what did you want to be when you grow up? And then... Uh, did how did you pick your major? Um, did it line up with what you wanted to be when you grow up? And then the third part to that question really is, um, where do you work now? And I'll start with Gloria. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, to briefly introduce myself, I'm Gloria Avalos, and I'm currently a senior manager at American Express. I was born and raised in Mexico, but I currently live in Arizona. I graduated from UCD back in May 2018 from the business school with a bachelor's in business administration with a dual emphasis in marketing and information systems. The way I ended up pursuing this bachelor's degree is because I've always been attracted to all things business. When I was a little kid, I remember I used to play restaurant just because I wanted to pretend that I was the restaurant owner and that I needed to figure out how to run the restaurant. Um, as I continue you know, growing up, I noticed that always, I was always drawn into marketing campaigns, trying to understand what were their goals, what was their audience, and just trying to understand how businesses run. Business is such an ample field, and I knew that if I pursued it, that I would figure out in what particular area of business I could continue to develop. Like I mentioned, I currently work at American Express, and my major is definitely in line with the company and what I do now. I have been working as a manager of a strategic analysis and testing for the past two years, and I'm now currently transitioning to be a senior manager in product development. At American Express, regardless of your role, a lot of disciplines are at play at the same time. And I truly can say that the vast majority of the classes from my undergrad have been really great foundations for the knowledge that I have acquired at work. So that concludes my answer, Jeff. Thank you, Gloria. Uh, how about you, Anastasia? Sure. So my name is Anastasia Quarles, and I am um, a senior analyst at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Um, I will say I 
graduated from CU Denver with my MBA in 2019 and attended another university for my undergrad. And for as long as I can remember as a kid, I wanted to be a physician. And so I picked a major and picked a university for undergrad that would align me with getting into medical school. Um, unfortunately, my science classes had other <laughs> answers for me and um, I quickly pivoted to healthcare business um, at the recommendation of my counselor at the time. She recommended that if staying in healthcare was something I was really passionate about um, to find a way to make it work without being the one providing care myself. And that is how I ended up at CU Denver um, pursuing the healthcare MBA. Um, and then ultimately how I ended up in my current career now. Right on, thank you. Um, and Hillary. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Hillary Beskner and I graduated from CU Denver in December of 2019 with my MBA in leadership and change management. I, um, I went back to school after, at that point, about 15 years of being in the workforce and taking on increasing leadership responsibilities at a large company and knew that um, I just had gaps in my practical knowledge from um, the workforce. And I wanted to fill those gaps in a, living locally in Denver, you know, an awesome degree from a great school with um, good challenges, local, local benefits, and um, also reasonably affordable um, for an MBA. So um, I'm happy to say that I've taken that MBA and as of January this year, I've launched my own company. So I'm definitely still using that, that business knowledge. So thanks. Right on, congratulations. Uh, and Fabian. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, so I grew up, I, I guess I didn't really have defined exactly what I wanted to do growing up. I, I you know, I, I joined, or I, when I started college, I, I started a liberal arts degree, kind of just exploring my mind in my undergrad. Uh, I went to CU Boulder for my undergrad and I, I you know, I, I, I took some business classes because I wanted to also, you know, get that sort of real world, you know, practical experience, something, something that I could kind of apply after I graduated. Um, and, you know, that led me to working in some startups after I graduated and, and ended up uh, getting really into the restaurant industry. So I think Gloria's uh, story kind of resonated with me, especially now that she's working in payments, which is something that I actually am like aspiring to do at the moment. Um, but, you know, she talked about, you know, running the restaurant. That's kind of, that was kind of my dream my whole life. But, um, you know, after working for years in a restaurant, I sort of realized that that was not what I wanted to do for my whole life. You know, I'd still like that component, but um, that's not what I want my, you know, to dominate every day and have to be, you know, completely uh, absolved by, by the restaurant. So I looked into, you know, what I could do to further my education. And I, I decided I wanted to pursue um, a master's degree in business. And I, I was thinking, you know, MBA, but I wanted something with the kind of global perspective because I, in my undergrad, I did a lot of sort of like global business courses I, well not a lot but all the courses that I did were kind of focused in that in that realm so um that, that's what I looked for and, and my, my father's a professor at Le at the Leeds school in, in Boulder and he had worked with Manuel Serapio who's a professor at, at here at, at, at CU Denver um he's the director of, of the Center for International Business Education and Research and he's you know a great great person that I ended up meeting and he kind of convinced me to come to, to CU Denver. That's what brought me to, to CU Denver in the first place. And um, yeah, I'm definitely using what I learned uh, in my, in the MSIB, which was like a degree that kind of also going back to what Hillary said about it, you know, fitting my financial needs. It was local and it was just an excellent degree, like a very, it felt like I was in a very prestigious, you know, institution, which it, you know, it, it, it is. And I, I didn't know about it. It was in my backyard. So I'm very grateful that I found out, out about it and that I, you know, joined the, the master's program and I graduated. And now I'm working uh, as an analyst at Accenture, working in their technology group, um, which is kind of exactly what I wanted to do as I learned in my MSIB. And it really formed me to, to be ready for this role. So, and now I'm hoping to, to work in the payments practice. So <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll connect with Gloria offline. <laughs> Right on. Yeah, a little different than the restaurant industry there, uh, for sure. Right on. Excellent, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, next question is, how did you pick your major and did it change from when you were a freshman? Um, and Gloria, would you mind answering that for us? Sounds good. So I picked my major by being very honest with myself. You know, I shared 
the background into how throughout my life I noticed that I was drawn towards business. So when it came time time to choose my major, I really needed to be honest with myself in terms of what I enjoy doing because we can do anything, right? But if we do what we are passionate about, it's going to be much different. We're, we're going to really enjoy it and, and be really good at it. Um, I was recently reading this book called Own Your Authority, and it talks about how we should always take a step back and listen to our intuition. Um, the more we do this, it's easier for us to know what we want. Um, so back when I was designing my major, there were a lot of factors at play. It wasn't only, you know, what I like to do. There were other factors, but I really listened to my intuition and ended up pursuing business. Oh, excellent. Right on. How about you, Fabian? Yeah, I can, I, I, I kind of in, the, in a similar way, but you know, I, I at first really didn't have much guidance when I started as a freshman in undergrad. Um, I, I kind of was impulsive. I just like joined an art history class and the professor, you know, did a, this amazing, like she like recited a poem in this ancient language and it, it, I had never seen anything like it. So I was like, I'm an art history major. This is like for me. And, um, and then I ended up doing like classics and then it kind of moved into humanities, which was more broad. Um, and so I guess I used my undergrad as like a way to really just learn about the world. Um, and I did end up, like I said, in, in kind of my last answer, I, taking some business classes. And that's partially because, you know, just like the pressure of like, I need to have some something practical, like I need to, you know, have a job after I graduate. Um, but I ended up being able to really like fuse a lot of the things that I learned in my uh, sort of humanities uh, formation, you know, like my, my liberal arts degrees um to to like my advantage in business so like i feel like you know especially with international business i i can kind of see the world in a way where i kind of combine business and history and politics and kind of philosophy and it's it's really uh you know interesting and fulfilling and sometimes you feel in the business world that things are are pretty one-dimensional but you know at least with that formation it helped me kind of uh broaden it out so it was more like an evolution that change and it was like and I guess in the same way, like following my intuition, like naturally led me to a, to like the kind of best of all, all the worlds. Um, but, you know, it, I think that, yeah, that's probably the, the best answer to kind of follow, follow intuition. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, Anastasia, I'd like to switch over to you. You know, there's, there's so many universities in the United States and in the world, really. Um, why did you choose CU Denver? Well, like many other people have discussed, um, living and being from Colorado, I was intrigued by the fact that there was a program locally um, at my, in my home state that was also economical for a new grad. Um, I also really enjoyed the fact that CU Denver is an accredited um, MBA program, which is not something that every MBA program is. Um, that accreditation comes with, you know, a prestige and understanding that you have a well-rounded business education um, that can be utilized anywhere in the workforce. Um, working in healthcare specifically, there are not many business folks in healthcare yet, especially in leadership positions. Most of those leaders are clinical in background. And so I wanted to make sure that I knew exactly what I was talking about and how I was going to make an impact in my role. And being able to go to CU Denver with that accreditation really made the difference. Right on. Very good. How about you, Fabian? Um, I guess it all came down to Dr. Manuel Serapio. Uh, <laughs> no, not really, but kind of. Uh, I mean, in, in some ways, the, the, it was really the, the Center for International Business and Education Research that, that brought me to CU Denver. It was a cyber. The, it's one of 17 in the country, I believe. There's not many institutions that have that you know we're housing it for the whole uc system um but it's in CU denver and, and you know it's it's one of two in the whole rocky mountain region um and so for me it was it was really a unique opportunity to attend uh something that doesn't exist in a lot of places in, in the country or, or in the world um but but you know right right next to you know i was a 10 minute bike ride from from my house so uh it was definitely that was an easy decision but uh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Serapio, you know, I, I kind of developed a, a good relationship with him and, and, and the very, I just kind of always look back to that first meeting that I had with him and it was just so convincing, uh, when I spoke with him. So <laughs> I kind of jokingly put it down, down to him. 
Right on. That's powerful. That's awesome. Um, all right. Uh, Hillary, uh, so when you were going into the program, did you directly apply? Did you transfer into CU Denver or did you start as a freshman right after high school? So I start, I came back to CU Denver um, later in life and I directly applied as a grad student. Um, and actually after two years, my company um, asked my, me to pick up my family and move across country. And so I actually paused my MBA for about 18 months and then I was able to pick it back up. And I was always grateful. I don't think a lot of schools will allow you to do that in an MBA program and CU Denver didn't blink. You know, I mean, I had to fill out some little extra paperwork, but we handled it really well and I was able to complete the program. It took me longer than most, but we got it done. <laughs> right on. How about you, Gloria? Yeah, so like I mentioned at the beginning, I was born and raised in Mexico. So I was already attending college in Mexico, uh, but I transferred to UCD from Mexico. I only ended up doing about two and a half years at UCD because uh, I would take five summer classes so that I can end my bachelor's earlier. Since I had done some college in Mexico, it just felt like I was in college forever. It felt like the longest time and I just wanted to, to complete that. Uh, but, you know, all the stuff at UCD was extremely helpful. Being a transfer student, regardless if it's from Mexico, from anywhere, is challenging. You know, it's a new environment, uh, but no one can help us if we don't communicate, right, about what we're struggling with. So all it takes is to ask for help. Everyone is extremely helpful at UCD. Uh, you can just send an email, reach out to someone. Um, I was never turned down uh, by anyone. Fantastic. Right on. All right. Here's always a fun one. And, and being a, a college student myself, um, I love hearing this answer. Uh, so Anastasia, what do you wish you knew when you started at CU Denver? Sure. Well, similar to what Gloria was just chatting about, um, I guess what I wish I had known sooner was how impactful and um, connected the community is at CU Denver. Being a Colorado native, I grew up thinking that CU Denver was a commuter school for kids who didn't actually want to go to and have the full college experience. And I was completely wrong about that. Um, the community is unmatched and the faculty and staff provide so many resources for you. And because it's a smaller school, you really get that one-on-one -on -one time with mm -hmm. faculty and staff that I didn't have um, at a larger undergrad institution. And so I really relished that in my MBA and kind of wished I had had that sooner. Um, something very practical that I found at CU Denver that I loved was the Writing Center, specifically their resume assistant um, center that they have within it. It was super helpful um, to just have somebody to look things over that was not my family and not my friends that didn't really know anything about me to give um, appropriate feedback in terms of beefing up my resume and CV and things like that to make myself the best candidate for jobs later in life. The Writing Center is a lifesaver. I will Unmatched. It's so definitely, great. <laughs> definitely tested that one. Um, how about you, Gloria? What did you wish you knew when you started CU Denver? I definitely have to second what Anastasia just shared. Uh, shout out to the Writing Center, right? Um, but what I wish I knew when I started at UC Denver was that classes do not get canceled when it snows. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But as someone from Mexico, I had never experienced snow before. And I quickly realized that I had to walk through downtown Denver with the snow. But no, out of all jokes, um, you know, at one of the events at UCD, I ran into this pamphlet that had the phrase, college is what you make out of it. And I remember it really stayed with me because it is true, you know, college is an investment of, of both our time and our money. And we need to make sure that we are getting what we want out of it, right? We have the ownership to make what we need out of this experience. Um, if any of the students watching this are like I was, you know, you feel like college is like never ending. You want to get it over with. But looking back at it is a very small snippet of your life. It's just a couple of years. And when you look back at it, you need to make sure that you don't have any regrets and that you used that time to your advantage. Um, I would like to close that by saying that I really cannot imagine uh, current students, you know, facing with the pandemic and COVID 
trying to make the best out of their experience, I'm sure it looks very different. So I definitely, you know, empathize with them. Nice. Thank you. Um, we don't cancel classes anymore. Thanks to Zoom. Um, so, you know, uh, all right. Thank you, you guys. Uh, Fabian, how active were you at CU Denver in school organizations? Um, yeah, I was, I was pretty active. I was, I was pretty active in my undergrad. So then when I joined, uh, when I started at CU Denver, I think it was like the first day where we get our IDs and stuff. Um, I quickly kind of started looking around for things. And the first, uh, I, I like saw the student government office and that was like the first place I kind of went in. And then from there, it like kind of captured me. Um, so I, I quickly like applied to a, a position on student government and uh, started uh, on the finance and funding committee. And then I started to get pretty involved and someone asked me to run with them for uh, for office to be you know the, the student body vice president. Uh, so we ended up running. It, uh, it was Daniel Casillas. So I was the I was the vice president last year of the student government. Um, and before I was like part of the vice the student government and kind of at that sort of level, because I don't know if that's really I guess it's still a student organization. Um, but I was I was really involved because of the finance and funding committee provides funding to student organizations. So I would hear about all the events and like hear about, you know, we would like fund the events that people would, would come in and to, to apply for. And, um, and, you know, I try to go to as many as I could and like, it's com completely a testament to what Anastasia said before. Like it's, it's the community is unmatched at CU Denver. Like people are putting in work to put on some really cool events and like really like innovative clubs and um, just a, a, an unmatched sense of community that I never felt at CU Boulder. Um, but that was, you know, maybe my my choice as well. There was definitely organizations there, but it, it was a different field just because it was a, a bigger campus. So, um, yeah, student organizations at, at CU Denver are excellent. If if you aren't involved today as a student, I, I suggest you 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 check it out. Um, my links, I think that's the site still where you can find all the active organizations. So maybe a future politician that we're speaking to here. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> no, the politicians scare me. <laughs> yeah. All right, Glory. How about you? Were you uh, active in, in any school organizations at CU Denver? Yeah, actually, similar to Fabian, I was also, you know, I ended up getting involved in many things because I was also just curious into learning about what are all of these organizations at school, right? And um, I was part of the student advisory board at the business school. I worked as a peer advocate leader, which is actually a, a great part-time job that connects senior students to first-year students so that, you know, they can show them the ropes. Um, I also worked as a research assistant for the marketing department of the business school. I would always also do those intercultural engagement certificates. I don't know if they're still active, but they're great. They do, okay, perfect. Um, and I would also, you know, just stop by uh, at any of the events that were going around in campus. Like there was one, for example, one time that it was a stop and serve volunteer, that it was about crafting, crafting winter hats for those experiencing homelessness. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I did. I just attended everything and was willing to, to be active in that sense. But really looking back at it, um, that really helped me grow my network. I'm still in touch with all of those folks that I met through those events. Um, I also was able to add a lot of those things to my resume. Mm. And, you know, I was able to benefit from those resources and organizations. Wow, so important. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hillary, how did you handle the or manage the transition from college to your professional career? It was a little bumpy. So I, my undergraduate's in engineering and um, I went to medical school um, after undergrad immediately. And about the, towards the end of that first year, I decided I didn't want to be a doctor. So similar to Anastasia, like there's lots of field of medicine. You can do all kinds of things in it. Um, I ended up using that engineering degree. I joined a software company. Um, there was a, it, this was a while ago, I'm quite a bit older than the rest of the panel. Uh, so they were hiring like mad back then and I, they were hiring about 500 people a week. And so there was actually a backlog before I could start my job. So I had to get an interim um, job um, until I could be in this, what they call a start group. And um, then it was very funny because I joined the company knowing that um, 
I, w- I didn't know if it was a long haul. Um, 20 years later, I left the company in September of this past year. So I stayed for a very long time. It was just meant to be. Um, but that transition was really interesting. Uh, I was a consultant when I first entered the workforce. And so I was on a plane every single week, Monday through Thursday, which is quite a bit of change from, you know, an undergraduate environment. But um kept my head about myself and um, tried to just make the most of all of it and don't regret a minute of it. Fantastic. How about you, Anastasia? How did you handle or manage the transition in your professional career? Sure. So um, almost completely opposite to Hillary, I thought my transition was a lot easier, but I think the graduate school kind of helped helped to lessen the blow of that. Right after undergrad, I applied and went into my graduate program. And and I'm fortunate um, and grateful for CU Denver because one of the reasons why I ended up picking them was because they had flexible class times, um, including evening classes. And that helped so much because I was able to work full time and enter the workforce, but also go to school full time and obtain my graduate degree. Uh, And so I think the transition was a little bit easier because I had both worlds to live in still. Um, Going to school at night was definitely made for like long days. Um, But I think it was nice to have uh, fellow classmates who were also doing the same thing. And we had all, you know, gone to various undergrads all across the country. And so to meet and still have, you know, a small sense of community while also transitioning into the working world um, was definitely very helpful. Right on. How about you, Fabian? My transition, it wasn't, it wasn't too hard. Um, I guess the hardest part was, was getting used to like the corporate world. I think, I don't know if Hillary can relate, but like, or, or Gloria, but like I, you know, I came from wor- working. Well, I, well, first of all, the transition, at least was for me was super easy because I was working as the you know vice president of student government running a bunch of stuff virtually because everything was all virtual doing my classes virtual it was all on teams what we did on student government and all my stuff is on teams for for my current company so that transition was like pretty much seamless in terms of you know I would just started orientation and it was you know teams kind of like classroom sort of setting it was basically like you know being back in school for a couple of weeks and then I started working but once I started working was probably the hardest part for me to get used to um it's just just a different environment of being in a, a huge you know uh corporation with hundreds of thousands of employees and you know you're kind of trying to navigate all of that it, it takes a little little bit of uh you know push you know you gotta kind of make room for yourself but uh yeah it's 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 definitely uh, something that that you can do and you can make yourself feel really, really happy in that place. Uh, and I think like, that's kind of going to be my answer at the end here, but uh, I'll, okay. I'll leave it for now. Thank you. Um, Hillary, if you could go back to your freshman year in college, what advice would you give that person about to, to enter school and maybe their career? Gosh, I think you guys were, had so much more fun in undergrad than I did, at least in, in the beginning, for sure. So the best advice I'd give myself my freshman year is, Um, I was so focused coming out of high school on what the requirements were. So I was, I layered all my classes my freshman year just to knock out like common core requirements and didn't take the opportunity to find a little bit more balance and find separate interests that weren't just structured in that, into that um, major path. And so what I would do is I, I ended up saving quite a bit of that for my last years of undergrad. And I would really look to find that balance early on because it'll also give you flexibility towards that first major. Your gut says that's what you want. That may not be the major you end up with. And having some of those extracurriculars or elective classes will give you a better view on what's out there and if you're really in the right space. So I would, I would maybe have been a little nicer to myself had a chance to do it again. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Bobby, and how about you? Yeah. I'm, I mean, I think, I, I guess my, my only advice is that to get more involved. Maybe I, I got really involved in, in stuff my freshman year, but I was like very, I guess, nervous. You know, I think it was very, it's kind of understandable. Like I was just, even though I was from Boulder, I was joining, you know, this campus that's like so many people and they're all from different places. You know, I was, I was definitely, you know, not in my kind of comfort zone, even though it was my, my town sort of thing. 
but you know I, that was kind of like I still push myself to get into these these different uh environments that I felt uncomfortable but even then like I didn't put I don't think I pushed myself en- enough or I could have pushed myself harder to to really you know even even go further and kind of uh b- break barriers because you know I I tried to to you know, I started a student organization. I was in student government and like, I did a lot of different things, but when I look back on it, I still like think of it like as a time that I had a lot of kind of like fear and and I was just very nervous. Um, and, and I think, you know, it was part of my growth, but I also wish I would have even pushed myself more because, you know, who knows what could have happened, but, um, yeah, that, that's, that's probably all I, I, all I can think of, or also maybe what Hillary said, like put a little bit of less pressure on myself at the same time as you can maybe I still do that but um it's like like I also was like you know I need to be perfect like I need 4.0 and I can't like there's nothing you know like Halloween everyone's out and I was like almost like happy in my misery of like staying in to write a paper you know like and I, I could have been a little bit more like you know just have fun <laughs> and I think fear is a normal emotion during that time for sure um so Last question is, you know, what is your final piece of advice that you want to share with the freshmen and sophomores in these classes that will be watching this? Um, and I'll start with Gloria. Yeah, so my final piece of advice, I would really like to go back to what I was saying about, you know, making sure that you get what you want from college. You know, nowadays, everything is online, right? YouTube and all the platforms. You could really learn anything. Um, and there's some companies even that they have, you know, taken the initiative to not necessarily hire someone with a degree, but someone that has the knowledge. So if you have decided to pursue a college degree, is you have your reasons, right? It may be for a particular job. It may be because you want to learn something because it truly is different, you know, going to college versus learning something online. It's, you have the structure, you have the support, resources. So just make sure that now that you made that conscious decision that you're making what you want out of it, not really taking that for granted. Like I mentioned, time, time goes by really quickly and you can get a lot of college if you ask yourself and if you, you know, uh, put yourself in that mindset that you're going to make the best out of that limited time that you have. Thank you, Gloria. How about you, Anastasia? Words of wisdom? Sure. Well, I was going to start with something and now I'm looking at Hillary and I'm thinking <laughs> it's like the opposite of what she would say. But um, <laughs> for me, I would, you know, pick a major that you really love because everything really falls into place if you really enjoy what you're learning. And it took me a few years and some, you know, sitting down with my counselor at the time to really understand that. But um, once I did that, everything else fell into place and I really enjoyed what I was doing and furthering my education and everything like that. Um, I would also say to take the time to get involved and meet your professors and get to know them outside of just sitting in class or sitting via Zoom with them. that is really what opened the door for me, not only to graduate school, but also to both of my positions at Vanderbilt since then. And that's something I would have not had or understood or really even known about um, had I not gotten involved with my professors and getting to know them in that way. Right on. Thank you. Hillary, how about you? Um, my best piece of advice would be never stop being curious. So ask a lot of questions, not just of your colleagues and your professors, but, you know, business in the practical sense, like who owns the Starbucks, you know, like who owns the pizza shop that you're at, ask them how they got started because everyone got started somewhere somehow, and you can learn a lot from that practical environment. So just never stop asking questions. Right on, right on. Fabian, how about you? I guess I'm thinking like three main things uh, of advice. One is like, I guess it's kind of cheesy, but this is something that I heard a few weeks ago. I think it's Scott Galloway. I don't know what I think of him, but anyways, the the quote is good. He said that money is the ink uh, in the pen that you use to like write the story of your life. So Mm -hmm. just make sure that you're, 
you know, writing the story you want to write with that ink. Um, and I know that, you know, money is one thing that we use to, to spend a lot on, on college. And so make sure that you're writing the story that you want with the, the resources you're, you're putting into your education and, and wherever else. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is, is something that someone told me before I started my job is to just lean in. Uh, and it's something that I need to practice more, you know, when you're, when you're like, even when you're nervous and like scared, just lean in like doors are going to open and you don't know what's on the other side. Um, but like, you're only ever going to know if you like step into it. And, and it's, it's especially when it comes to reaching out to people, like lean into that intuition. Like if you feel like, Oh, maybe this person might be able to help me. They can like, or if they can't then reach out to the next person, but people, people really want to help you and, 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 you know, reach out and like, use that kind of relationship, build relationships with people and lean into them. Cause I, I think it, it really pays off in the end. Um, and then the third thing is, uh, use, use the wellness center. I, oh man, I miss the wellness center. You should use, you have such a beautiful wellness center. So if you haven't gone, use it. <laughs> there's like a jacuzzi in there. I miss the jacuzzi. Absolutely. I think there's a nap room too. If I remember right. Uh, you guys, thank you so much. Um, you know, as, as I was listening to you all share and, and talk a little bit, um, you know what, I, I wrote a few things down. It was very, um, very informative and, and very inspiring to me and, and hopefully our students. Um, but one thing I picked up on from, from all of you was the passion. And, and uh, that I really appreciate that. Um, so see you, Denver, uh, the business school, and myself, we want to thank you for taking the time and answering these questions and allowing our students to be a part of your story, really. Um, so thank you so much. We really appreciate it.